Hello guys, welcome to another video brought to you by Riyadh Koba, an English teacher. This is the third video in this English dance series. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the simple past. If you're interested and you want to find out more, please continue watching this video. Welcome back. So far, we've covered two tenses, the simple present and the present progressive. So if you have a problem with these tenses, consider watching these uh, videos. The next lesson will be on the past progressive. If you want to get the hang of these tenses once and for all, consider subscribing to this channel so you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. Before getting started, if you are a high school student, whether you are a first year, a second year, a third year, or a fourth year student, I would like to share these comprehensive books with you, which contain everything you need to get a good grade. You name it, we have it. So for more information, please watch this uh, video. السلام عليكم انا رياض قبا استاذ لغة انجليزية في الفيديو هذا مشاحكي لكم على حاجة جديدة اللي هي الباراسكولير هذية Before getting started with the forms, I would like you to watch this video and focus on the verbs in the simple past. Turkey was always on my list of countries to visit. This trip came after years of hard work and sacrifices, so I decided to break out of the routine and get aha moments in my life. As this was the first time I'd been to Turkey, I went on a package tour with my family. It was a seven-day trip. We stayed at a three-star hotel called the Grand Ons Hotel, which was centrally located as it was a stone throw away from all the big tourist attractions and shopping stores. Our trip kicked off with one of the must-have experiences in Istanbul, a cruise on the Bosphorus Strait to enjoy a relaxing and scenic boat trip. This was a great opportunity to check out all the amazing sights and sounds of this magical place, its panoramic grand palaces, its colorful neighborhood, and its bustling waterfront activity. We also visited one of the most popular attractions, Kamil Kahil, described as the most beautiful and charming hill in Istanbul. At night, we paid a visit to Ortakoy, ah. known as a popular spot for locals and tourists alike, for its uh, art galleries, cafes, and restaurants. During this trip, our tour guide took us to the Topkapi Museum, where we saw the Sultan's riches and toured the inner world of the Hara. We visited the Blue Mosque, a historic and popular tourist site that continues to function as a mosque today. We also went to Taksim Street, where we had an amazing stroll. We had a great time there, shopping around, tasting Turkish delight, and listening to the lovely melodies that the street musicians offered. The cream of my trip was definitely the teleferic ride in Bursa City. This was the most memorable experience I had ever had in my entire life because I had never had the opportunity to see snow and touch it until the day I went to Bursa. I liked how the view changed. The most enjoyable activity I did was jet skiing. I recommend taking warm clothes and proper snow jackets and pants if you want to do this activity. Another part of this trip was devoted to shopping in Turkey's most visited shopping centers. We started off with the, the Forum Istanbul Mall, which is one of Europe's largest shopping centers, and then paid a visit to Olivium Center, where we found an extensive range of international clothing brands at low and reasonable prices. As for food, although I'm a picky eater, Turkish food was among the things that tested Food was glorious, delicious, and all freshly cooked from scratch. I was going to seize this opportunity of me being there to go on a diet and lose some weight, but I could not resist it because of the incredible variety of mouth-watering dishes in Turkish cuisine. So, this was a part of my trip to Turkey. If you want to find out more, please check out my travel vlogs. You will find the links in the description box below. In the second part of this lesson, 
we are going to focus on a grammatical point. And I would like you to read these sentences and say what tense I have used. I went on a package tour. It was a seven-day trip. I stayed at a three-star hotel. Our trip kicked off with one of the must-have experiences in Istanbul. We visited Turkey's most uh, popular attractions. We paid a visit to Ortakoy. Our tour guide took us to the Topkapi Museum. We saw the Sultan's riches and we had a stroll in Taksim Street. As you can see, I have used the simple past tense to talk about my trip to Turkey because that trip took place in the past. So, when do we use the simple past? We use the simple past when we want to talk about an action that started and finished in the past. But some of you might have forgotten the way we form the simple past. So, let's go over the rules. To form the simple past in the affirmative form, the rule goes as follows. Subject plus verb plus ed, and this is when with a verb is a regular, or subject plus an irregular verb. An irregular verb is a verb in which the past tense is not formed by adding the usual ed ending. Examples of irregular verbs are do, did, feel, felt, take, took, see, saw, pay, paid, and so on and so forth. So these are called the irregular verbs. So we have not added ed to these verbs. As for the negative form, keep in mind these three letters. S, D, V. If you want to make a correct sentence in the negative form in the past, S stands for subjects, D stands for didn't or did not, and V for verbs. And the verb here does not change. It should be used in the base form, which means verb without to. Let's change these affirmative sentences into negative ones. I didn't stay at a three-star hotel. We didn't have a stroll in Taksim Street. And we didn't visit the Topkapi Museum. As you can see, all the verbs in the negative forms are in the base form. So we have not added ing, ed, or anything. So it should be as it is. There were three blank lines after high school to list more education. I didn't need that many lines. I didn't need that many lines. I didn't just sit there with Mike, answer all the questions. Oh, I didn't even tell her about the auction until after she took me back. You think I didn't have other things I wanted to do with my life? You think I didn't have ambitions of my own? Oh, come on, you love string. I didn't love string. And it didn't matter what I did. I didn't even exist. I didn't leave, Lars. I was cast out. The last form you need to know is the question form. To ask a question in the simple past, keep in mind again, these are three letters. D, S, V, D stands for did, S stands for subjects, and V for verbs. The last form you need to know is the question form. To ask a question in the simple past, keep in mind again, these are three letters, D, S, V. D stands for did, S stands for subjects, and V for verbs, which must be in the base form. Now, let's apply this rule with these sentences. So, for the first one, I can say, where did you stay when you went to Turkey? For the second one, where did you have a stroll? And for the third one, what places did you visit? As you can see, we have here question words plus did plus subject plus base form. Did you kill the mouse? Did you kill the mouse? What did you do yesterday? What did you do yesterday? Easy, right? Yes, it is. So again, all you have to do is to keep practicing. It's as easy as one, two, three. 
We've come to the end of this second part of this uh, lesson and now let's move on to the practice section. Put the verbs in the appropriate tense and then check your answers which you will find at the end of this uh, video. So keep watching. That's all for me. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and also to make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you so much. Love and peace. Riyadh. Uh, last year, I went to Portugal just after Christmas, and I stayed there until, well, just after New Year's this year. Uh, in Portugal, I met up with one of my friends from Toronto. He had family that lived in Portugal because his family was originally from Portugal, so they were kind enough to let me stay with them. I didn't know any Portuguese except for some simple words like hello and thank you. I learned some simple words through an audio CD before I went there. And the people that I stayed with didn't know very much English either. However, we got along surprisingly well. They were surprised that I was able to eat some of their exotic foods. They made some delicious meals every single day, like octopus, tripe, and rabbit. It is quite exotic, but I thought it was quite good. They also made some excellent desserts like creme caramel and a, a rich sponge cake that they called pound de l'eau. Okay, now I'll talk about my winter vacation. Uh, this winter vacation I spent two weeks in my hometown, which is uh, Daytona Beach, Florida. It was wonderful. Uh, the weather was warm every day, the, it was sunny every day, and the temperature was almost 80 degrees. I visited my mother, and uh, I spent every morning having a nice leisurely cup of coffee and reading the newspaper, and after that I uh, uh, got the, my bicycle out and rode down to the beach and enjoyed the sun and the surf. I came back home and read a book and went to bed early. I had a wonderful time. Uh, I, I saw a couple of new movies when I was uh, home in Florida. I saw The, uh, a the Aviator and also an uh, interesting movie called Spanglish, which I hope you all can see because it's an interesting movie about English and the Spanish.